know, it's, it's so awesome. Daily Wire is now in Nashville. We're yeah, pumped yeah. about it. I'm a big fan, so I thought, well, hell, I got to show Ben around. So I thought, well, if we're going to do it, listen, you can't be a legitimate country singer if you don't have a big ass Cadillac. You have to have a big ass <laughs> Cadillac. So this is 68 Cadillac DeVille convertible. I've had this car about 15 years. It's got a 472 under the hood. It is a it is a muscle. This is back when America was still making cars out of metal, right? Yeah. American metal. So it'll be fun, right? It'll look like we're running for mayor. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's go. We're so happy to be out of the blue areas. We're so happy to be out of there. Jeremy said you went to Florida because the uh, the community down there was the, the you Jewish community. Yeah, there, there's not and a big Jewish here, community here. They're all liberals here. Well, it's yes, yeah, so it's liberal, and also you need some options. So my, my theory of politics is that God gets everybody. This is my theory he of gets, politics. It, everybody the end, gets what they deserve. In the end, yeah. you're going to get it. Yeah. Now Biden's getting what he deserves. He's wanted his entire life to be in this position. He wants to be beloved. He wants to leave office. And he's a 30, love president. 36%. And he's at 36% because he's a f***ing terrible president. Exactly. So, it's, so it's just. And nobody, uh, I'm, you've seen those polls, but the majority of people don't believe Biden's even running anything. Yeah? Right. People just don't. They know he's not. I right. mean, every time yeah. he says, they told me I could take a couple, I'm, I'm supposed to call on. Who told you to do that? That's the question. Who is telling you these things? Who is it? Is it Susan? Who's in the background? Yeah, I mean, the, the truth no, is that... We don't believe it anymore. Like, I think that he's making, like, big calls in terms of Afghanistan. I think he's making the call in terms of Build Back Better, that he's going to push hard for it, but I think that's about it. Like, I just don't... I think that he wakes up for about five minutes a day. Yeah. And they feed him the insure. It's elder abuse. Yeah, it, exactly. And then they, like, shake him awake long enough to If be that like, was your no. grandpa, if, if Joe Biden was your granddaddy, well, would I mean, you then, ever then, put him in that position? If Joe Biden was my grandfather, like then that would be my mom's a hooker grandpa, because right? Hunter's my dad. So well, that's, right, but I mean, you would never put somebody that you cared about in a position like that. Oh, it's elder abuse. I mean, he's Absolutely. Clearly, he's clearly not with it. I mean, it's. I would feel bad making fun of him, except he put himself in this position. He's the president of the United States, so I'm not going to stop making oh, fun of him. Oh, it's open target. Yeah, exactly. Like I say on the show, I call him President Houseplant because he's just barely alive. <laughs> he performs Houseplant. basic photosynthesis. Really, what we need right. to do, he's never visited the border. All we have to do is just build a, a nice ice cream stand right on the border, and you know he'll go at that point. He's done an underneath ice cream cone. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Check it out. So what is the damn deal with the fake um, Oval Office setup where they're shooting his interviews from this Hollywood set. What is that? They were saying that it's Why about social distancing. That? That's bullshit. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, I don't it's know. It's not social distance when Saki does a, a presser. Right. Well, but, yeah, honestly, like. So what is that? I don't know. I hope that they start piping in different backgrounds, like an Instagram filter. <laughs> like, I just think it'd be great if he's suddenly giving, like, he's just in Antarctica all of a sudden, and you're like, wow, that's weird. Niagara Falls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Today I'm joining you from Niagara Falls. <laughs> yes. Well, why don't you get in a barrel and roll over the edge of it? Watch out, please. headed up here is uh, Music Row. Have you been down Music Row yet? Uh, I don't think so. You, but you know what that is, Music Row. No, like, talk to me about it. Back in the day, all the studios, all the publishers, all the record labels on one street, literally. So you had a multi-billion dollar industry on, sitting on one street That's called awesome. Music Row. Right. And so they've had to, you know, as Nashville has blown up, they've knocked stuff down and this and that, but there's still a bunch of it there. Elvis cut down there. I'm gonna show you where he cut. It's such a pretty town. Yeah, it's funny. We have a we have a red governor and a blue mayor. Yeah. So that gets a little interesting. All Orthodox Jews is like DeSantis' number one fundraising hub. Is that right? Oh yeah. That's awesome. When he, when he wants to run a fundraiser, he comes to the Orthodox community, we raise a bundle for you him. Think, you think he's gonna run? I guess it depends on what Trump does. It all depends on Trump. If Trump you know, runs, nobody's running against no, him. Well, because well, here's the thing. Even if you beat Trump, he's a wrecking ball. You ain't going to so beat Trump. He's going to tear you limb from limb. Right. And You're even, damaged goods when he gets done with you. That's exactly right. So there's no upside to it. Even if you emerge with the nomination, he'll have destroyed you so right. badly in the primary. If Don it. Jr. ran against Donald Trump, he would tear Don Jr. Oh, from yeah, no, no, he he's, does he's not completely care. mercenary. He does not. No, he's, he does like, not care. he's an animal. And he's looking at Biden, and he's like, well, you know, I'm still younger than that, and I've got... Well, I'm all hopped up with no place to go. Even people that 
I mean, the bull well, like he's Hayden beating Biden right now. Hated isn't? him or whatever. Those people are now watching how this is all going down and going, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's not crazy to think he could win a general against Biden at this point. Now, he, well, he would win if if it's legit. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think that he's not the cleanest one yeah, because he has the highest negatives, right? Because Biden didn't get elected because anybody gives a shit about Biden. Sand, but anybody that's going to run for president as a Republican better be swinging a hammer like Trump would swing it or they're not going to win. Well, that's, so that's DeSantis. So it's not right? going to so matter DeSantis, who it is. Right, so DeSantis is... DeSantis is a bruiser. Right. I mean, he's a bruiser. He's just yeah. been taking it to people in Florida, and he and he he knows how to handle the media. He's super smart. He went. He was a jag in the Navy. Yeah. So he's got I a know. really he's got he's a really smart. good really good record. Like if Ron runs, it's gonna be hard to it's gonna be hard to take him. And also, like what he did during the pandemic, the guy's got stones. He takes yeah, I mean, stones. he goes, okay, you want to have this? Then fine. I'm just gonna find you every single time you do it. Right. What are you gonna do about it? Exactly. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, he, he makes other governors look like they're all. A bunch of panty weights. Exactly. So he's he's doing a great job. I think that governors are absolutely the most important position in our country right now because they have a hundred percent, a hundred percent. They're the only ones that can effectively fight the Fed. I totally agree with you. I mean, honestly, there's a big movement in Florida to tell DeSantis not to run because he's such a good governor. Really? Yeah. People are like, we we want him to stay here. Like, we don't yeah. want him going federal. Like, right. we, we want him to stay over here and continue to do what he's doing. Like Florida's interesting because it was really purple and now it's turned pretty solidly red. Yeah. It's like Ohio. Well, all the red. all the Latinos who came who have family that were under communist rule, they understand it better than anybody. Oh yeah, and yeah. they're not going to deal with it. Miami's got a Republican mayor. That's what I'm saying. I mean, no, no, it's like all I'm the ca- all the counties like in it. South Texas that were blue for so long are no longer exactly. blue. I mean, who hates illegal immigration the most? Legal immigrants. Yep. Hate illegal immigration the most because those people are diluting their life. They're, they're taking their jobs, they're diluting their pay, and they didn't do it the right way, and they had to stand in line to do it the right way, and they resent it more than anybody. And so, a lot of these houses, mm-hmm. people don't live in those. Those are those are like songwriting, publishing houses. All the rooms, you know, like would be in any house, but they're all writer's rooms. Oh, that's cool. So you'll go in there, and you'll sit down with somebody to write a song, and you can hear somebody through the wall writing another song, and somebody downstairs that writing is another o- song. That is awesome. Yeah, they estimate somewhere around 100,000 songs a week get written in Nashville. Whoa. 100,000 songs a week. That's a lot of songs. Yeah. How many of them are good? Well, Ten. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about the batting average, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this has always been interesting to me, what we're pulling up on now. I call this hillbilly porn. This is the headwaters of Music Row. This is the top of Music Row, right mm-hmm. here, bam. We're, we're pushing upon it. And this is what they put. Why is it not a statue of Johnny Cash? Why is it not Patsy Cline? What is it why don't, why don't to we be? have a Mount Rushmore of country mm-hmm. legends singing this? No, let's put a bunch of people with tambourines uh, with their junk hanging out. <laughs> Hillbilly porn. <laughs> That's what they, uh, every time I drive by, I tell my kids, close your eyes, boys. We're going by the statue. We all hate it. And again, that, that's where that's where you get a liberal mayor that says, I think they did it on purpose. <laughs> Just as good. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Two sons. They're 10 and 11. A lot of fun. That is a, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of testosterone in the house right there. Yep, that is where... I wrote my very first publishing deal was right there at that building. That's awesome. And uh, so that's one of those writer rooms mm-hmm. I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. And that building right there, I've probably written probably 500 songs. Oh my gosh! In that little tiny building. Wow. So how's it, how does your process work in terms of, you know, you write a song and then what do you winnow down to actually recording? I, so I have written songs with all different motivations. So I've written songs because it's something I want to say, and I don't care if it's a hit. But so I write that song because it's a powerful thing to say the truth in a song. We all, that's powerful. Then I've written songs specifically for certain artists. So they'll say, okay, um, Jason Aldean is cutting a new record and he needs up tempo song about this subject that kind of sounds like this other hit he had. And so basically it's a sniper shot at mm-hmm, that point. Mm-hmm. So you're going to sit down with a blank piece of paper with those instructions and you're going to try to write that. So that's almost like film you're try to land, Yeah, you're yeah. going to try to land the cut. I've written it for all different kinds of reasons. Like one day I get a phone call and it's Taylor Swift. I go, hey Taylor, what's up? She goes, hey, uh, I'm, in, I'm in your neighborhood. You want to write a song? I went, sure, let's write a song. It's just out of nowhere. I said, 
I don't have anything going on. Come on by the house. So she comes by the house, and we write a song, and it went on her Fearless album, which sold like 30 million copies or something <laughs> like that. Songwriting is interesting. I tell people all the time, the most powerful thing in the world is a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. The Constitution of the United States started out as blank paper. The Bible, the Torah, mm -hmm. anything, all of our great documents started out blank paper and somebody with a pencil and their thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something nobody can ever take away from you. Isn't that the ultimate freedom, is to have a blank sheet of paper? I'm with you. I almost write and edit at the same time, so I write really, really fast. So it's I started off- talking because you talk so slow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, between you and Candace, it's like sitting in front of a verbal machine gun. Yeah. Brr, brr. I mean, you guys go at it. Yeah, yeah definitely will blow your hair back. So when I sit down to write, I can I can pump really quickly. What's 750 the, word column, maybe Well, what's the process so. to get to a point where you can do something like that? So I talk like I write. I talk in paragraphs, and so I write in paragraphs. I've done it so much over the years. I've been, like you, you know, you do it for long enough and it, it just comes naturally. Well, yeah, you don't so even have to think about it so much. We're both writers, but we write totally opposite. So you're writing long form, I'm writing short form. Are you shocked at where you are in your life? Every so often you look around and you go like... You go, wow. Yeah. I mean, so Jeremy and I started this company in his pool house. Yeah. And I was the lawyer for a company called Talk Radio Network, which is the syndicator for Michael Savage and Laura Ingram. Yeah. And my boss was like, you guys really should meet because he was very into Hollywood kind of stuff. And so we met, we started talking, and that was in 2009, maybe? And Not so, that long ago. We, yeah, so we worked, a, we worked a couple of jobs together. We started a company called Truth Revolt. I don't know yep. if Jeremy ever told you the story about uh, how we got this company started, but this is no. kind of funny. So there are a few key steps to how we developed. One was, I always thought I was going to be the business guy. I mean, I went to Harvard Law School. I was a business guy. I helped run the business for Talk Radio Network and all of this. And so when Jeremy and I met, we thought he's going to be doing Hollywood stuff and I'll be the business guy. Right. And then my book came out. Uh, bullies in 2012, and okay. that's when I was on uh, Piers Morgan. Yep. Right? That was very early 2013. And so I did that interview with Morgan and blew him off the air. And <laughs> right. Jeremy turned to me and said, we've got this all wrong. You're the talent and I'm the business. Wow. And so we went in-house at a place called David Horowitz Freedom Center. We built this company that was kind of reverse media matters going after left-wing media companies. And we had a mutually assured destruction strategy, which was, if you guys are <laughs> going to try and get us boycotted, then we're going to try and get you boycotted and we'll knock you off the air. At a certain point, Jeremy realized that what the right really didn't understand at all was marketing. Jeremy's like, okay, so here's the deal. We're gonna spend an awful lot of money on marketing, but it's going to build a machine that's going to produce money. So we go and we're explaining this to a board of 501c3 conservatives, which means everyone is between 75 and death, right? No one has seen a computer. They're all writing with ballpoint well, pens. Well, that's why we're getting our ass kicked, if I can just Yeah, pause, no, that's right. Is that we fight with 501c3s and they fight with corporations. This is exactly right. So Daily Wire is way more successful as an LLC. Right. So we so we walked into the, so we, we go into this meeting. We're trying to explain, basically give us a million dollars and we'll use it on marketing and we'll build a machine. They don't understand it at all. Like they just don't get it. And so they turn to me. Right. I'm the fast talking guy, he's the slow drawling mm -hmm. Texan. I had nicknamed him years ago the stupid whisperer because we would have conversations <laughs> with people and I would say something. He's the god king. Exactly, and it would go right over their head and then Jeremy would say it much, like the same thing, much slower right. and with the soft Texas accent. And they go, and, oh, and they okay, go, that oh, makes that's sense. genius. So, it, so his so, pitch so that was, is more effective so, sometimes. So sometimes, so finally they turned to me and they said, explain it. And they said, can you simplify this? I said, yes. So I took out a napkin and a pen and I wrote, here's our business plan, dollar sign, arrow, Facebook, arrow, website, arrow back to dollar sign. This is our entire business plan. We're gonna take money, we invest it in Facebook, yes. it's gonna drive traffic to our website, we're gonna make money. That's the entire business plan. And they they fired Jeremy that? the next day. Oh, they no fired, kid? Yeah, they fired Jeremy. Whoa. Uh, and then I quit in solidarity. Jeez. And then we took that exact business plan, we went to our investors. You know, they're billionaires and they get all sorts of pitches. And so we're sitting there and like, we get pitched on a media company every single day. You know, what, what, what makes you guys different? I mean, the guy who's kind of asking was not being particularly nice about it. He was like, yeah, you know, we get guys in here pitching media companies every single day. Yeah. Why should we invest in you? And I looked and I looked him in the eye and I said, because I'm better at this than any of those people are. There you go. And they all paused for a second and then they all started laughing and then we got the investment. So it was either going to work or wasn't going to work. Well, but isn't it, that it, the point though? I mean, any, anybody, if you don't believe yourself that you have something, good luck convincing anybody else. Exactly. You have to believe it first. I love what you guys are doing when you see Gina Carano, for instance. You see somebody get brutalized just to say something that they don't agree with, and then you guys snap them up and continue their career. Yeah, it's great. And then market them to the people that you know love them. I mean, Listen, what a concept, right? Yeah, our, I mean, can't our, that play across all kinds? Is that everything? That's the future. Everything. Right? It's everything. Of the high-profile cancellations that we've seen over the past year, I probably reached out personally to 80% of them. No kidding. 
What do they say? Like, are, so, they, are they nervous about So Gina was like, okay, let's do this thing. Yeah. She understood innately that they weren't gonna let her back in and that she had a choice. She could either wheedle and whine her way into bit parts and maybe five years down the road, they'd start letter acting again. And beg and scrape and right. bow. And- you know, it was, it was T2, right? Terminator yeah. 2 is like, come with us if you want to live. And so Gina, Gina <laughs> right. got that and she went for it. Good yeah. for her. Yeah. The more of that's going to happen in the I think, future. I think people have to understand that there's no way back. That they, they, There is no forgiveness. Like people are still under the misimpression that if they apologize enough, that people will let them back in. This is Game of Thrones. You show your neck and they will chop off your head. This that's is right. not about the knee. And guess what else you will lose? All self-respect, all integrity. Here we are in Nashville, right? Country music, home of country music. Do you know who the audience is for the most part? They're a bunch of blue collar, gun toting, Bible banging family people. Yep. That's that's who they are. But guess what the industry is? Yep. Opposite of that. It's all coastal, right? They, they are as LA, liberal as any Hollywood liberal you ever met in your yep. life. The industry that is entertaining these people, that a lot of the people in the industry actually detest everything about Absolutely. the people that they're entertaining. And the audience is starting to figure it out a little bit but nobody's connected those dots. If they realized whose money was involved in the radio station that they listened to in their hometown Mm -hmm. and who those people are, they would never listen to it again. Yeah. And and by the way, all these artists that want to say what they want to say, and if they say it on a stage, 20,000 people go, hell yeah, say that again, are are not saying it because their label, their publicist, their manager, the booking agency, whatever, is gonna wipe them out. Exactly. They have killed their freedom of speech. Now, then it come down though to the to the person like, hey, they didn't kill your freedom of speech. You're allowing them to kill your speech. You could say it. Nobody's putting a sock in your mouth. They cannot cancel you unless you allow them to cancel That's you. That's exactly right. If you have an audience and you're good at what you do, they cannot cancel you. Only you can cancel you. That's how you. I come at it. Yep. I mean, I'm out there. Sorry, just hit your camera. Do I need to adjust this camera, by the way? You guys hear me? Whoever can hear me in the car, I don't know. I just <laughs> hit that. I hope that's still seeing you. Hey. I hit the camera. Hey, Is it, it okay? Good to see y'all. Okay. Hey, thank you. I was just sitting there thinking about all this, and I went, you know what? I am not saying what I want to say or being who I want to be, because if I do it, the music industry, there will not be another hit song at country radio. There will not be another award. There will not be any of that. But one day I just said, you know what? I'm sick of this. And yeah. so I just started swinging, coming at them. They no longer come back at me anymore because they realize I'm not going to stop doing it. And eventually they just give up. Yeah, exactly. As long as you don't stop. It's, bl- it's blood in the water. If you, you, if, you, if you give them blood in the water, they will just crowd swarm you. But if you don't, if you're just like, okay, all right, you know, you said what you're going to say and that's pretty much all you can do to me. And I'm still here. Exactly. Then they, they really have no place they to lose. go. I feel like we're just providing a home for people who want to, who want to speak out and want a, want a safe place to go yeah. and, and an alternative. So when are, when are we gonna get you? Hey, how's it going? I know, right? Hey, thanks for coming. Hi, John hey, like, what's up, guys? Country star John Rich. That's what's a new duo? It's 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 Ben and Rich. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. It was so cool. It was last great. Night. Thank you so much. Y'all Appreciate it. Nice. You too. Yeah, Welcome exactly. to Nashville. Hey. <laughs> Jeremy told me that you guys were talking about doing doing a label, and I'm I'm so into it. We I'm are so into it. You would take ground away from them. Yeah. Because we don't need them anymore. Not yeah. if you got a platform like no, that. Exactly, you guys exactly. You've got a, the the so, crossover yeah. between our audience and your audience is probably the day, 90%. The day you look up and Daily Wire Records has the number one spot in country music, that's a party. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that day that day will happen. It won't be Smokey Mike and the God King, I can guarantee you that. That is that is a thing that's not going <laughs> we, to happen. So. Yeah, we'd have to work on that one. So you're a violin guy. Yeah, I played in between so I, I was heavily trained between the time I was five and one of these eight. days, dude, we have got to get you down here at my bar. We gotta play something. Oh, I'll totally do that. If, if anybody throws me a fiddle, I'll, I'll, I'll totally that'd do that. would that be fun? That'd be a blast. Oh, yeah, that'd be super fun. My dad is a fantastic jazz pianist. I grew up with him and so he and I, you know, like at my bar mitzvah, we played Brahms together. He comes That's over. Cool, he comes over to the house before Sabbath, and we'll like break out Beethoven and stuff, and we'll really? play together. Yeah. So we're on Broadway right now. Live bands in every single door. There is more beer sold per square foot on this street than anywhere on the planet. <laughs> That's a fact. That's awesome. <laughs> more than the French Quarter. More than Las Vegas. More than any anywhere. Right here. So this is my bar. Oh, building. wow. These buildings were all built in the 1850s. Oh, my gosh. So my building, hand-cut brick, you know, they made the old school brick, 1851. Oh, my God. And my building was actually used as a hospital during the Civil War. 
Right in front of us is the Cumberland River. When the Civil War broke out, the Confederates were right here. The North came right down the Cumberland River with their boats and started cannonballing downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. So it's, the history's deep. So what are your boys into? So they're, they're all sports fanatics? Yeah, baseball is, is big, baseball and basketball. So I got my, my son Cash out there. Hey, how's it going, dude? Hey, thank you. He was playing a basketball game and they were getting humiliated by this other team. I mean, it was like 62 to 10, it was awful. And Cash grabs his knee and he goes and sits down, they put ice on his knee and, he, and, and I said, he better be hurt, he better be. <laughs> well, when the game, he never went back in the game. When the mm -hmm. game's over, he jumps up from the bench, throws the ice on the floor and walks out the door like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. And so he's in my truck, we're driving home. And I said, you know what you are? He goes, what? I said, you're a loser. And he goes, I know because we lost the game. I said, no, you're not a loser because you lost the game. You're a loser because you quit the game. So I walked him in and showed him his, his great granddaddies who both fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. One had six purple hearts. Oh my God. He was 5'2", wow. 110 and was a tunnel rat where they'd send him oh, in the cave with a flamethrower to flush the Japanese he's the Pacific, yeah. He's that guy. So I, I made him go look at his World War II uniform that night. And I said, you think that man's a quitter? His big old tears. This culture is teaching our kids that it's okay to quit, it's okay to give up. If it's too hard, you can stop. If you don't get what you want, throw a fit. And nobody's gonna win no. with that attitude. Not in the real world. Exactly. Hey, what's going on? That's gotta make you feel good, right? Drive around Nashville. Yeah, exactly. It's and all the country awesome. music fans like Ben Shapiro. Exactly. Hey, ben. That's right? what I'm saying, man. Like, hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah, they love you, bro. Uh, love you. That's why I had that party for y'all. Yeah, no, because that, that, I'm was, like, that was I'm awesome. Like, if you're gonna come to my town, I'm gonna make sure you uh, know man. we appreciate you. I will admit that I had a good time sicking a meatloaf on Candace. And so I and oh, so absolutely. And, and so he walked over to the table. He's doing the nice, thing. He's the nicest bunch of guys I've ever met. <laughs> 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 I mean, so tonight actually on on Fox Business, I have a show called The Pursuit. Mm -hmm. So meatloaf is on tonight. So basically, it's about the pursuit of happiness. So I mm -hmm. interview people about their pursuit of happiness. That's cool. In their life, but he goes. He goes, John, when I was in ninth grade, man, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. One day I'm out there practicing, and I hear a kid go, watch out. And he says, I turn around, and there's a 16-pound shot put about three feet from my head. Like I just look, and there it is, and wham, hits me in the head. And I went into a, basically a coma for three days at the hospital. And when I got out of the hospital, I could sing. He goes, you don't believe me? Feel it. And he leans his head over, and I, he goes, there's a flat spot on my head. And sure enough, about that big. There's a flat spot on Meatloaf's head. But that's he, a, said he, he said he never that's, played baseball again and, and, and went and tried out for theater in his high school. Wow. And that's where it started. That's forever. wild. Is that crazy? That, that, that's a wild and then, story. And he goes, yeah, one time I was in Amsterdam. Back then, he's selling 100,000 tickets. Yeah. He's the biggest, he's queen. He's the biggest thing there is. Yeah, I was in Amsterdam. And I don't remember what all drugs I'd done, but I'd done a bunch. He said, I'm sitting backstage. I'm getting ready to go out. And he goes, you know who walked up to me? I started talking to me. I said, who? And he said, a midget version of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I said, a midget version of Abraham Lincoln. He goes, yeah, and he's dead serious. He goes, you know what he said to me? <laughs> said, no, me, what did he say? He goes, he said, he looked me right in the eye and he said, go out the back door this time. <laughs> crazy. So yes, he's a crazy bastard, but what a talent. So you're in the belly of the beast right here, buddy. So Blake Shelton's joint is right there. That's Kid Rock's bar right there. Welcome to the Redneck Riviera. Hey, thank you. Yeah, buddy. Hey, how's it going? This is a sweet place. Yeah. Our main bar is called the Heroes Bar. If you're active duty, or a vet or a cop, first drinks on the house. That's awesome. So we have done thousands and thousands of right. drinks on the house. So people search this bar out from all over America, especially cops, because we back the bullet here. Yeah. You gotta find more walls to put them up. Yeah, exactly. It's like a thing to do when That's they come so here cool. they bring their patch, right? That's awesome. Isn't that great? That's super cool. We do not hide our patriotism. It's just they awesome. They sing the Star Spangled Banner in here every single night at midnight. And Amazing. Everybody salutes. That it's your kind of bar. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. As a kid that grew up in a trailer park in Texas that sings country music, I never thought in a million years I would have my own place 
on Broadway in, exactly. in the best that's musical a, that's town That's a great the world. story. Yeah. That's an unbelievable yeah. story. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shocked every time I walk in here. I can't believe this is my joint. When people crap on this country, they do it's not know what they're dream, talking man. about. It can absolutely be done. You guys want to go up top? <laughs> What an awesome place. Right? It's so cool. This is the Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> so what is more country than the American flag made out of beer? Cans? <laughs> a beer that can is awesome. American flag. Is that not the greatest? The Daily Wire needs a beer can American flag somewhere in the I feel like that, I feel like that would go over in our oh, offices. Good, man. The bar business is not an easy business. Right. How did you decide that you were just going to go ahead and do I don't that? Know. How did you decide that you're going to tell the whole world to kiss your ass and you're going to start daily wire? Yeah, is that true? <laughs> it's like, hey, it's something I want to do. Last time I checked, I have the freedom to exhaust my potential. So I'm going to take risks and I'm going to step out and do things that I think may or may not work, but we're going to find out. Redneck Riviera Whiskey is now in 12,000 stores. Amazing. So think about this. You have the word redneck in today's culture sitting in 12,000 stores around America. And nobody's kicked it out. They go, I don't like the word. I go, but well, do you know where the word comes from? It's from people that are bent over working all day outside and they get a sunburn on their neck. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like a, a term of endearment. It's yeah. also a, it's also pride. It's like I'm a hard working guy, I'm a hard working girl, I got a red neck. I built this building, I built the brand, everything around the love of America, the right to pursue happiness, work ethic. It's awesome. Very simple. So when you're running for mayor over here. I get asked that a lot. I'm sure you do. I tell people, uh, I say, you know, anybody that's a career politician has a mental disorder. That is true. Because they're not good people, and if you enjoy it that much, something is wrong with you. Totally agree. <laughs> so this is literally people ask me like, "What's your first requirement in a politician?" And I say they don't want to run for office. So that was a quote from uh, John Adams back in the day. He said, "Only people that detest politics should run for office." Exactly. Will I ever run for something? I don't know. Maybe when the mustache turns white <laughs> and my boys are this tall. Hey, listen. I mean, the the average age of our politicians is 80, so you got a long time to figure it out, right? That's exactly <laughs> Hope you had a good time today. That was awesome, dude. It was fun showing you around. Hey, thank you. Next time, we're bringing that fiddle. Perfect. Do a little jam. Bring your dad. We'll rock and roll. That'd be the best. We, we love you in this town. We love what you guys stand for. And we're glad you're in Nashville. Glad you got the hell out of California. Well, thank you so much for having us. You bet, man. Come back anytime.